The victory over former WBC heavyweight champion Hanklin Thomas. As that fight was. I, I messed up. You know, there isn't anything I, I can express what happened that night. All three in favor of the winner. Uh, I kick myself in the, in, in the butt every night uh, since uh, the fight. And still, heavyweight champion of the world. What went wrong, you know, I can't put my finger on it. But for me to, to learn from it, and I gotta move on. Tonight, David Tua takes the first step on his road to redemption. Next on Showtime Championship Boxing. Takes on number three contender, Danelle Nicholson, in an IBF heavyweight elimination fight to determine who's number one. And in our co-feature, you'll see one of the most talked about heavyweights of late, the Black Rhino, Clifford Atien, go against undefeated Prezzo Kendo in a scheduled 10-round attraction. Packed house on hand, over 2,000. We welcome you to the Dallas Event Center for a crossroads heavyweight matchup. The last time David Tua fought in Las Vegas, he went bust, losing a lethargic 12-round decision to heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis in November. A victory tonight could put him right back in the title hunt. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert ringside from Las Vegas. When David Tua challenged Lennox Lewis last November, he was considered the most deserving contender in the world. But after a reasonably effective start, he never threatened the champion, losing virtually every round en route to a one-sided decision loss. Tua's corner initially blamed an injury that was aggravated early in the fight. However, at a chunky 245 pounds and coming off a handful of ridiculously easy wins that were meant to kill time until his title shot, was Tua properly prepared or was it inevitable that he, he'd be outclassed by Lewis, who enjoyed a 15-inch reach advantage? Now tonight, the number five ranked Tua faces number three rated Danelle Nicholson to reestablish himself as a legitimate contender in a lackluster heavyweight division. With that, let me bring on my ringside partner, former world champion Bobby Chez. And Bobby, what the heck happened against Lennox Lewis, and how has this affected to his confidence and stature in the division? Well, Steve, after talking with Lennox Lewis, he did indeed confirm that the ribs were re-injured, previously done in training camp. But he said that wasn't the biggest problem. His biggest factor for losing that fight and looking so bad is that he had one fight plan. And when that plan didn't work, he had no plan B. He had no backup plan. The corner couldn't make the adjustments. He couldn't make the adjustments. Thus, a very long sorry fight he did not look good throughout the entire fight because he just couldn't make the adjustments what happened after that is he fired his trainer he had a wake-up call got back to basics and now has a renewed confidence believes he can do much better we'll have more on that later but in your opinion was Tua coddled and baby too much in terms of opposition leading up to the lewis fight you know early on Tua fought everybody Moskayev, david Izon, ike ibibushi john ruiz rockman that's the top talent in the division but as he secured that number one spot he coasted. He took easy opponents to not jeopardize that number one ranking. He should have fought someone just like Donald Nicholson because Nicholson, tall, rangy, same style, might have prepared him much better. Well, they might have felt that he was a little too dangerous going into the Lewis fight, but he's got him tonight. Before we get to David Tua, you'll see the Showtime debut of a contender who some feel could be the future of the heavyweight division. He's power puncher Clifford Atien, and he is waiting in the wings. But first, a reminder. We invite Showtime subscribers. ATN takes on Prezzo Kendo in a matchup of undefeateds. ATN from the Louisiana Bayou is one of the most intriguing fighters in the heavyweight division. It was one of the most exciting fights of last year. And when Clifford ATN beat Lawrence Claybay in a 10-round unanimous decision, he became a legitimate player in the heavyweight division. Growing up, ATN had no aspirations to become a fighter. Instead, he was heavily recruited to play football by such universities as Oklahoma and Texas A&M. But after an arrest for armed robbery, he was sentenced to 40 years in a Louisiana state penitentiary. You know, we did things, you know, things I don't like to talk about now, you know, because that's my, really my past, you know. Committed on robbers, committed crimes. This is a bad way to learn a lesson, you know, doing... 10 years of your life, you know, behind bars, but that's a lesson well taken. It was there he learned how to box. It just gave me something to really focus on and not be around knuckleheads all day and stuff like that, you know? I realized that I was pretty good, getting pretty good when nobody wanted to fight me anymore. And I wanted to 
Louisiana Department of Corrections heavyweight title in my second fight. After a decade behind bars, he was released. And at the age of 28, he began his professional boxing career, compiling a perfect 19-0 record and earning the nickname the Black Rhino for his aggressive win at any cost style. You know, I believe boxing is a battle of the fittest. You know, why play around, hold on, hug and everything else, but get it over with. Clifford Etienne's goal is to become the heavyweight champion of the world. But with his efforts to lead a clean and legitimate life, he may have already won his most important victory. When I think about the past and where I've been and what I've been through and where I am now, I feel good. Man. I feel real proud. Six to one favorite. Clifford ATN fighting tonight for the first time with a pain-free right elbow. Recently had surgery to remove bone chips and says he can throw even harder now. A style predicated on raw power, strength, and aggression. His impressive decision over previously unbeaten boxer mover Lawrence Claybay on the Lewis Tua card, a candidate for fight of the year. And although Etienne often rained punches and punished Claybay, he couldn't stop him. Bobby, will Okendo pose problems with his jab, his movement, and overall boxing skills? Well, good boxers can always pose problems for good punches if they're effective, if they're really that good. But the problem is they also have to have some power to get some respect. Clay Bay, a good boxer with some pop, still didn't have enough to keep the Black Rhino off. It could be a very long night for Kendo. ATN feels he's not getting the respect he deserves for his own boxing ability. And here is Fred Zokendo, unrated, trained by Felix Trinidad Sr., who Okendo says has raised his confidence, emotion, and conditioning to another level. 93 national Golden Gloves champion. His wins over former world amateur champ Ramon Garbay and previously unbeaten Duncan Dokawari, a 96 Olympic bronze medalist, also has wins over veterans Everett, Bigfoot Martin, Phil Jackson, and Bert Cooper. Okendo, nothing spectacular, Bobby, but gets the job done. Usually out hustles opponents, but his chin a question mark. He will go down. Well, I'll tell you, Steve, from what I've seen of the Black Rhino, he has a lot of the goods, and he's going to test Okendo's chin early and as often as possible. If the chin's not good, this fight could be short. As we check the numbers, let's go to the tail of the tape. ATN at 31, four years older than Okendo. Both stand at 6'2". Okendo with the big seven-inch reach advantage. At yesterday's weigh-in, ATN 225, Okendo 221. And the key rules for this fight. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fighters rule they no contest. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at Texas Station, we're getting ready for Clifford ATN versus Frenzo Kendo. We get the formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Texas Station Gambling Hall and Hotel in North Las Vegas, Nevada, as we have a big night of action coming away, and it's all brought to you by America Presents, in association with Showtime Championship Boxing and the Station Casinos, the leading entertainment company in Las Vegas. This bell coming away also brought to you by Rhino Promotions and is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem. Physicians are Dr. James Game, Dr. Jeff Davidson, Dr. Gino Signorino, and our timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns, Jane Bronfoot and Mike Lachella. Our three judges at ringside, all three from Las Vegas, Nevada, we have Dave Moretti, Dolby Shirley and Glenn Trowbridge. And the third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go. Undefeated heavyweights in the ring, the big boys of boxing, and a special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds of action. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gray trunks with white trim, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, by way of San Juan, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 221 pounds, undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 19 wins, no losses, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome a fighter they call the Big O, Frez Okendo. And 
his opponent across the ring on my left. He is ready to fight out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, fighting out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He weighed in at 225 pounds. His impressive record stands at 19 wins, no losses, 13 big wins coming my way of knockout. Please welcome the WBC number four heavyweight in the world, introducing the undefeated Clifford, the Black Rhino Etienne. Once again, a referee in charge is Jay Nady now to give instructions. Ten rounds of boxing schedule. All right, do you have any? Your mouthpiece. You got it. Okay. Do you have any questions? This is ten rounds. Obey my commands. All right. Watch your heads. Let's touch the left now. The belly button there is the is the line. Let's go to work. 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 All right, Bobby, let's get your keys to victory. Okay, for Etienne, what he has to do first is keep the pressure on. That's his style of fighting. Also, cut off the ring, stay inside on the mover of Kendo, and land his power shots. He is the heavier puncher in this fight. For Kendo, he's got to establish an effective jab. He's going to need something to keep the Rhino at bay. Also, he wants to outwork him, outpunch him, make him miss, make him pay. And lastly, box smart from the outside. That's his best fight. We're set for round one, scheduled for 10, non-title bout in the heavyweight division. ATN, fast starting, high volume power puncher who Bring keeps the, the pressure the on. Okendo, a notoriously slow starter, a big test particularly for his chin with a heavy hitter like ATN. Okendo, good athlete, has really got himself in better shape under Felix Trinidad Sr. ATN still gaining experience but making up for lost time. A, a raw Keep but an exciting up. new talent. Don't grab his head. Well, the first round is going to be really key. They're both undefeated. Both have a reasonable amount of knockouts, so they have a little power. But the confidence level seemed to be a little more with the Black Rhino. At the same time, neither one of these guys looks like they're going to get too close right away. A big time feeling out process here in the opening minute. ATN got a late start in boxing due to his conviction, stopped his first opponent in 31 seconds, and has maintained that aggressive punching style. He's even been compared by his own trainer, Don Turner, to Joe Frazier. But Turner, who also trains Evander Holyfield, said he doesn't punch as hard as Frazier did and gets hit a little less. Etienne really wants to get inside, work the body, work that. He wants to force the slugfest, and Okendo wants exactly the opposite. Okendo will invite nothing but trouble if he fights Etienne's fight, which is to slug. And Okendo, not a uh, particularly big puncher, therefore Etienne could be brave and take some chances. But he's being uh, somewhat tentative here. Takes a lot of energy to keep moving like that. Not only that, you have to stop, plant your feet to fire if you're going to generate any real power. So. Kendall's got his work cut out for him to show that he's got to be made of a lot and be in good shape. And ATN has a good chin. He's been down only once. He can't remember who did it. <laughs> that must have been a heck of a punch. <laughs> That's what he told us. But defensively, he does get careless on occasion and can be hit. But very good recuperative powers. He's in stop, stop, excellent stop. condition, ATN. Do not grab the black. his head. Box. You notice just on that little sequence that ATN bent over and started to lean in, lean in, lean in, never jabbing his way and just trying to come in with big power shots. Sometimes that can be a big mistake. Stop! ATN looking to end this in one punch. He may need a bit more variety, like the jab mix up the punches for. Stop! Stop! Look at this. Two, That's a three, knockdown. Four. Nice right hand again. He came in with his head down Six. and he did not work him behind the jab. A clubbing Eight. right hand by Okendo. It's only the second time. Has been down in his career. And he goes down again with a looping right. What is going on here? Now there's going to be some questions about Etienne's chin. Five, six, seven, Etienne eight. Etienne knocked down twice in the first round. Final seconds. He gets up with a smile and he comes back. And he goes down for a third time. No three knockdown Two, rule. Three. And I'll tell you, he's saved by the bell, five, except in the sixth. 
in any round. Seven. Eight, you okay? One. And there's the bell. ATN on the deck three times. I want you to bob and weave, use the head movement, okay? He's going to come now because he thinks you're hurt. And I want you to start your punches from the body on up to the head, okay? From the body on up to the head. But bob and weave, all right? Don't worry about going after him. He's going to come after you. Take a look at those three knockdowns. Very simple. Jab right hand. The jab wasn't even anything more than a feeler. And then he gets hit on top of the head two times after he hit, hits the deck. Second knockdown, same thing. Same right hand over the top. Etienne showing he cannot make the adjustments and de be defensive. Here he comes in, swinging wildly. His hand down again. He gets hit with another right hand on top of the head, side of the temple. Head shape. So that would be a 10-7 round for Okendo. Etienne down three times in the last 35 seconds of round one. Not too reminiscent of Joe Frazier right now. But well, you know, boxing ability is one thing. Toughness is different than how good you are. You can be good but not be tough. And right now, he's not showing a tough chin. You got a box. You got a box. We box. Kendall got a shot in the bow. the head. And he backed away. Stop. You this looks like it's going like to be a that. sloppy fight, Steve. The Rhino's charging in. And as opposed to playing Matador, Kendall's just retreating and holding. Just looking to get that right hand in again. You cannot hold. Okendo holding on to ATN. And a straight right hand that backs ATN up. Stop, stop. Okendo looking head. over Watch at your head. You bend the referee, Jay Nady, as the heads clash. Okendo complaining. Some of the charges by Okendo looking a little, excuse me, by ATN looking a little amateurish. And Okendo not getting out of the way all that smoothly either. blocked by Okendo. Stop! Stop! Don't put his head down! Stop. And now, almost like Evander Holyfield, Okendo pulling ATN's head down. ATN missing with most of those shots. The style of these two fighters match up to be as awkward as could humanly be possible, I think. And it's causing all kinds of frustration for ATN. Etienne's charging with his head down, swinging wildly, and Okendo's not smoothly stepping aside or using a jab. He's just trying to hold, but he's putting his arms out to Don't do it to get tangled up with Etienne. Etienne going to the jab, now missing wildly with the right. Okendo landing with the right to the head, which worked three times in the end of the first round. If you're just joining us, Etienne, the black rhino, Went down three times in the final down. 35 seconds of round oh, one. Clubbing right hands. He he went to the knee. Etienne's got to work him behind the jab. It'll not only bring him inside, it'll shut down the Keep gap, and it'll put him right up. Oh, there's another right hand to the head, and Etienne is down for a fourth three, time. Four, five, he gets up quickly. Six, you okay? Seven. He's eight, got 23 got seconds up. in round two. Five. Kendo trying to end it with another right hand. And you know, Kendo should just do what he's doing, but step to the jab. Use a little power jab. Get Etienne's head up in here, then take it off the right hand. Etienne is wobbly. He's on unsteady legs, and he looks out of it right now, just trying to be defensive. At the bell, he almost went down again. You understand? Yeah. You've got to shift your body. Where's Lucy? Make it hard for him to hit you. Then he's he's forget about, about his head. You there was some headbutts in the round. We'll take a look at one of them right here. Charging in with his head down. Not, not intentional, but just charging in with his head down. And this is what happens when he keeps his head up. He gets it taken off. Right on the, right on the temple side, part top of the head. And getting hit on top of the head truly does hurt Steve. I've been hit there, hurts very much. That's not a big shot. That's 
Not a big shot at all. Not a real clean shot, but the place he's putting it. Etienne's evidently weak. It is round three. Etienne has been on the canvas four times over the first two rounds. All on right hands by the boxer, Okendo, not the puncher. ATN comes in with the reputation of being a powerful puncher. And the puncher's chance is such that every second of the fight he has a chance by just landing that home run ball. But again, Etienne is not working his way in. He's not setting up the chance to land anything really clean. He's charging him his head down and swinging wildly. Not effective. Kendo being cautioned for holding. Kendo working the jab. Heavy right hand there. That startled ATN momentarily. ATN not using a lot of head movement. Again, not working. There's a good jab, but not working behind it. Two or three jabs, then fire the right hand. Two or three jabs go to the body. Here he's just swing, putting his head down. Lo looking at the floor, Steve, I'm a little confused. ATN is confused, too, as he just dives into Okendo. How can you look this good against Lawrence Clave and have this much trouble against Okendo? Is it simply the awkward style? No, it could be a number of different things. Maybe Clave just didn't punch as hard as many of us gave him credit for. And the chin is not really that good here for ATN. Maybe the awkwardness of Okendo is confusing him. Maybe he can't get his timing, but boy, he does not look good. Now, Clave, a little more orthodox, throws punches from this stereotypical boxer standpoint. Okendo's a little more awkward. Body shot by Clifford ATM that has Okendo complaining. Not sure what he is complaining about. He said that was low, but uh, the referee didn't see it that way. That was right on the belt. result of his own okay, misfire. Box. <laughs> Something I've never seen from a fighter slips. Oh, Kendall ran after him. Oh, and another right hand. And ATN is it down again. Three, four, five, six. You I think eight, we're almost past seven. the point of no return winning a decision here. Right. That is number Box. five. And 30 seconds to go in the third. ATN's trying to bounce back and end it on one or two punches, but he's in trouble. Final seconds of round three. ATN missing Watch again wildly. He just can't get near Okendo, who keeps eluding those big punches. You know, Steve, there's just been no strategy here to swing wildly for Etienne. Where is the game plan? He's punching too far out. You hear what I say? You're punching too far out. That's when you're getting time with your hand down here. Keep your hands up, man. Keep your hand up, man. Yeah. You gotta keep shifting that body like you're doing. That was great. But still go for the body. The body is a measuring point for the head. Come on, Vasilene. Still go to that body, but go with combination. Let's take a look at what's clearly become a pattern. Right hand on top of the head, and Etienne goes directly to his knees. This is the fifth knockdown in just three rounds. Look from overhead, you see right on the side of the head, combination on top of the temple, right there. It's just, every time he gets hit there, Steve, he goes down. And Bobby, these are wide punches. They seem to be telegraphed. ATN just can't see them coming. ATN's defensive skills are limited, and he started late, and there's a lot of brushing up he needs to do. A work in progress, Clifford ATN, but now he comes out with a purpose. He came, out behind, he came out behind a triple jab and two shots to the body. The most effective combination maybe he's had all night. Maybe ATN should go to some boxing technique here. He continues to swing wildly. No plan. You heard Don Turner in the corner saying, you're, fight, you're fighting from too far outside. You're throwing punches, leading from way too far outside. Work your way in first. And that's so Kendo style to fight from the outside. Good right hand there to the temple by ATN. But they're wild and he's getting tired because he's missing. Big, a big left hook by ATN. He's starting to score more now. And he's registering those hard punches on Okendo. 
We'll see what kind of conditioning and stamina Okendo has. Well, at this pace, both fighters throwing a lot of punches, missing a lot of punches. Okendo missing less, but moving more. We're going to see if attrition becomes a factor. Those left hooks by Etienne are starting to get in there more regularly. This with the right. Etienne seems to have a, a, a second wind uh, all of a sudden after being knocked down on five occasions. And we're only in round four. Etienne backing Okendo up, using the forearm. Yeah, there was a nice little forearm slash elbow. The left hook was blocked by Okendo's glove. When Etienne comes in, watch how low he puts his left hand as he leans to the right and leaves his whole left side of his head, jaw, ear, and top of his head wide open for that right hand from Okendo. the first round that Etienne's actually been affected winning the end of every round of the run of getting knocked down. Here's a big right hand by Etienne, a straight right, and it's got Okendo thinking. Got his attention. Right now, this is just sheer guts and determination by Etienne. He just refuses to stop. He's not allowing Okendo to think now. 30 seconds in round four, and Etienne Etienne himself is going to need to show some good condition to keep this pace up. He's missing some of these punches. Huge. Back comes Okendo with a straight right hand that scored. But a much better round for Etienne. And as I say that, he stumbles a bit off a right hand by Okendo. How are you feeling there? You, you can't open that mouth. Take a deep breath. That's it. Don't run. You got to walk. Walk side to side. You got to walk. Don't run. You're in great shape right now. The guy's throwing punches. Crazy punches. You're doing are you listening to me? Camina, no me corra. Walk, don't run. Close and combination. You follow what I'm saying? The hardest punch Okendo may have taken all night was from Felix Trinidad Sr. Okay. Well I'll tell you what, Felix Trinidad Sr. is just trying to keep him calm. He saw that last round, maybe the tide turned a little bit. Momentum surely moved. It's the first round that has actually won. And Akendo's giving it up because he, every time he throws a right hand and he throws it well, he hurts Etienne. Round five. This is a big right hand that hit the jaw of Okendo. Maybe the best punch of the night for Etienne. And it's got Okendo just hanging on. You can hear Don Turner saying that Etienne, you just outwill him. Use your will. Beat him with your will. Etienne now. up to his nickname, Break. the Rhino just charging in relentlessly. And he does just keep coming, Steve. There's no quitting him, and, you know, again, if he's going to have a problem with a lot of big punches, a guy like Lennox Lewis will have a field day with the right hand that he has, the range that he has, the speed that he has, if the, if the Rhino's chin is really not that good. Pushing Okendo back with the jab, trying to drop him with the right. Okendo comes back with a slapping left that somehow sent ATN back. One thing's for sure, we have to read not question do that. ATN's chin. Box. Down five times in this fight. And on punches that didn't look particularly ferocious. Sometimes the punch doesn't need to be that devastating, but put in the right place. There's a weak spot in Achilles' heel, so to speak. A few of them were to the top of Etienne's head. 
which as Bobby has pointed out over and over is a very vulnerable spot. We approach the final minute of round five. Hey, slowing down just a little bit. Okendo continues to box from the outside. They told him to walk, don't run. Well, he's close to running. <laughs> he is. A left-right combination to the head by Okendo. Okendo doing a nice job with the jab and some good movement. But he can't get trapped on the rope. That's where he good body shots back. by Etienne. He wants to keep Etienne out in the center of the ring. That's where he's had most of his success. And Etienne has not made that many adjustments. The right hand is just sheer aggression. Again, that's a bad spot for Okendo on the ropes. A left right combination of the head by Okendo. Etienne weathers it. Hits another beautiful right hand of the head by Okendo. Just before the bell to win round five. Bobby, let's go inside the ropes and further examine these knockdowns of Okendo against ATN. There's a right hand on top of the head, side of the head combination. Another one, same place, same position. One more on top of the left side of Etienne's head. That one also, top left side. It, it must be Achilles heel because he's been hit with better punches. Those all put him on the floor. Later, he came back with a right hand of his own, not too bad, over the top that really shook up Okendo. Talk about give and take. Not to be outdone, Okendo comes back here and wobbles at the end one more time. Bobby, we're halfway through the bout unofficially. How do you see this? I see this as a trainer's nightmare. Yeah. I have it three rounds to two, but 48 43 with all the knockdowns in favor of Okendo. Okendo has registered five knockdowns. The last two rounds, though, Etienne outworked him, pressed him, outpunched him, and looked better, but I wouldn't go as far as to say really good. Well, we said at the outset, Etienne couldn't remember who knocked him down the first time. He'll remember Okendo. Got a pretty good feeling you're right about that. You push him down, you hit you low. Don't push down. Okendo being warned not to uh, push Etienne down by referee Jay Nady. And he said, if you don't push him down, he won't want his punches won't hit you low. Oh, the heads collide. Keep your head up. You keep your head up. Okay. ATN came charging in. And they just both bent over and slammed into one another. No blood. I'm sure when ATN gets back to home base, wherever he calls home base, He's going to put this tape in and watch that he doesn't move in behind the jab and everything comes around nothing straight. And just a moment ago, as you were talking, a perfectly timed straight right hand by Okendo, just as ATN was cocking to throw a punch. Left hook is scoring by Okendo, as is the jab. Right hand again off the top of the head. Why not? It's been successful. Now, Okendo digging to the body. Now you see a little bit. Oh, a low blow. Perhaps a low blow. Feels it over is. there. Go over there. Jay Nady sends him to the neutral corner. He'll have uh, five have minutes. Low. And now he gets down to his knees. And the fans think he's faking. But I don't know about that. No, but you know what? It was a combination of he pulled Etienne's head down, and Kendall did, and the hook went south. Now he seems uh, a little bit better. He's trying to recover as his trunks button. nearly fell off. Well, the rule once again. No coaching. He has five minutes to recover. If he needs that much time, if he doesn't recover, he automatically loses. Which once again, I thought is a strange rule. I think the rest right here is going to help Etienne more than it does with him. They're trying to take no. the trunks up because they're loose. They're slipping down. Halfway through round six, Turn the clock has been stopped, and here we go. He comes racing up on the rhino. Okay, maybe it was wrong, but we have to rest up most. <laughs> and to rejuvenate Okendo. Okendo again, 
blocking those punches and then whipping the jab. Right uppercut missing by Okendo. Okendo, the more active, setting the pace. A right hand by Okendo that gets in. A little snappy right uppercut. So sheer aggression without some skill behind it is not necessarily worthless, but does not necessarily make you make you a good fighter or a championship caliber fighter. Etienne here is showing very wild movement, some sloppy punches, terrible defense, even when he's coming in. No elbow. Okendo with a little bit of a forearm elbow. Okendo is making Etienne look silly here, making him look like an amateur. He's dancing all around him. He's scoring with jabs, uppercuts. He keeps looking over to the right. Do you notice that? I thought he was looking at us. Maybe he can hear us. Well, he's not going to learn much from me. Maybe from you. And again, he stuffs the jab. Okendo with a slapping left. Everything's getting through. You notice, that, you notice that when Etienne misses, he misses wildly, and he turns his body around because he commits so much to the punch. He doesn't turn back too quickly. He leaves himself wide open. And then... Does a nice job defensively, uh, Okendo, of eluding the punches. Right uppercut to the chin by Okendo. Okendo with all kinds of confidence. We took the choke this fight. Take it easy now. We got control of this fight now. And we're going to win. Boxing is your business, man. The jab is doing great. Don't worry, this, this victory is yours, man. Watch this now. As as Okendo's standing here, Etienne's going to come in. His head's going to be somewhere around here, and Okendo's going to take it and pull it. And his left hook comes way under here short because it, because it winds up being bent all the way over. And it's one of those things where, watch him pull, he pushed the head down and it helps to bring his shoulder down and the punch winds up south. And it didn't look that solid. Take a break. Don't grab his head. After a one minute break to recover from the low blow, Okendo looked the pressure of the two and uh, I think won that round. I agree with you, Steve. I gave him that round. I have a four to two, but the scoring in points is still huge. There aren't enough rounds left to win every round by one point for Etienne. He's past the point of no return to a degree. Again, a purposeful Clifford Etienne comes barreling through, wants to end it right here, saying enough is enough. A low blow with the left hand, and Okendo complains. Jay Nady not doing anything about it, and the rage continues. A left hook off the top of Okendo's head. Okendo, though, standing up to it. You heard Okendo a little bit. But I don't know that Etienne has the energy, as much as he's still charging forward, has the energy to execute properly and continue the good combinations. The fans try to urge on Etienne by chanting in unison, Rhino. Right hand by the Rhino that got in. But Okendo showing a pretty good chin. And now, I tell you, Etienne may have punched himself out. He may have punched himself out, but right now, Okendo doesn't look that much the better to wear. And ATN just walked into a right hand by Okendo. And that right hand keep it up. more flush than the other ones that dropped him. And this time, ATN remains standing. Halfway through the seventh. ATN backing Okendo up. This is where ATN wants Okendo against the ropes. And powers to the, uh, to the body. And Okendo works away from him and turns his side to him. Kendo just leaning out of the way, not really offering up any smart defense and then holding on. Look, just backing up. His hand caught in the ropes. This is where conditioning will really pay off. ATN supposedly in great condition. We'll see. If he's got enough to come back from five knockdowns. Etienne just chasing Okendo from side to side. A right uppercut followed by a left hook by Okendo. Etienne's so tired, he's got his hands down. A left hook by Etienne. Etienne's exhausted. Okendo's exhausted. But with the point buildup, I don't know that Etienne has enough left to stop <laughs> Okendo. And that's what he's going to need to do because the points are just too, too much. Etienne just stumbling around, almost went down on his own. Right hand off. 
the top of ATN's head. I think ATN needs a knockout here to win this fight. And right now, you wonder if he's got it in him. Oh, big right hand by Okendo, and ATN's down for the sixth time. That was the most solid of the right Five, hand, Steve. That one landed six, well. Seven. And right to the dead hey, center of the corner. ring. You okay? Hey, come to me. All right? Right. ATN is exhausted as the bell sounds. Are you all right? Well, he is done. I said, then don't use them and move the upper body. I don't give a damn. You understand? I don't care if your arms are hurt. Work him. How are you doing? All right. I can fight a big man. You can walk. Yes, I'm huh? walk. You okay? Yeah. You sure you're okay? Yeah. All right. All right, man. This is probably the best right hand that Okendo has thrown as far as landing. It was solid right on the same exact spot. It's almost like an instant replay of the first knockdown over and over again. But this one even cleaner. Clifford ATN telling Don Turner, my legs are gone. Turner replied, I don't care, then use your body. The more lightly regarded fighter, Frenzo Kendo, with six knockdowns to the first seven. One of these two fighters will suffer the first loss of his career. They're each 19 and 0. You know, and I will tell you, I watched the Clay Bay fight start to finish, and I thought Clay Bay hit him much cleaner than Akendo has shown us today, yet he did not drop him at will as we're You're watching. Okay. The You're okay? okay? Box! ATN on very, very weak legs. Don't grab! He doesn't have much left. This is sheer will by ATN and Hart. A left, hard left hook by ATN got in. Best punch head. he's landed in a couple of rounds, but once again, it's one and done. That would have been low. That would have been low. Okendo stuffing the jab. Now you notice who's backing up? Yep. ATN. Pure sign of exhaustion. He has nothing left. And he's eating a lot of jabs, ATN. ATN really sucking wins. Every time a Okendo has knocked ATN down, it's been a right off the top of the head like that. And down he goes for the center time. And I'm not sure he can continue after this. Four, five, I don't think he wants six, to get up now. Seven, eight, fight's over. That's it. That's all she wrote. Can't fight back the tears as he surprises number four WBC heavyweight contender Clifford ATN. You know, Steve, I never used to understand when people cried when they were happy. So I won my first world title, and yeah, I did. I cried. You can relate. Finally, I can relate. And look at this show of emotion and drama. Well, he said that no one gave him any credit coming in here. He's a big underdog. Everybody was looking past him, and lo and behold. He proved a lot of the critics dead wrong, and I didn't think he was going to win this fight myself. A 6-1 to one underdog, his wife Stacy there, and a lot of relatives in attendance, his father, his brothers, his sister, and they're all able to celebrate. And now a great show of sportsmanship here, as Frenzo Kendo not only hosts ATN, but trainer J.C. Davis. Here's Hector Camacho Jr., fellow Puerto Rican. Quite an upset here in Las Vegas tonight as Okendo derails heavyweight prospect Clifford the Black Rhino ATN. Who came in rated number four by the WBC, number seven by the WBO, but tonight's result will not help his cause. Okendo was unbeaten, but he was unrated. He knocked down ATN a total of seven times. Watch his last knockdown. He's working on the ropes, and the right hand is landing. There you see the stagger, and there you see the finisher. 
incredible susceptibility on the right to hold it left side with the by the right hand. Etienne just showing no way to defend against right hands that come around. I mean, he just doesn't even pick his left hand up, Steve. I'm shocked. He was totally fatigued and exhausted. Couldn't do it. Down he goes for a seventh and final time. What a big blow to the highly regarded Clifford ATN, who was perhaps still feeling the effects of his war with Lawrence Claybay. Let's get the official numbers from uh, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 37 seconds in round number 8. A referee in charge, Jay Nady, stops the contest upon advice of the corner. The winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated. The Big O, Frez Okendo. So Frez Okendo pulls off the upset. He moves to 20 and 0 with 11 knockouts. Meanwhile, Clifford ATN suffers his first career loss and slips to 19 and 1. Frezzo Kendo on the shoulders of seven knockdowns, surprising previously undefeated Clifford ATN. Coming up next, our main event for the big men. Number five, Ivan Allen in West Samoa, now living in South Auckland, New Zealand has totally revamped his training regimen and mode of preparation since the embarrassing loss to Lennox Lewis. Manager Kevin Barry, new trainer Joe Goosen. You see Joe right there on the left brought in a strength coach, a dietitian to get his weight down and add even more lean muscle mass. 